I would like to introduce uh, Dr. Moin Zalal first. So he has joined Brack University very recently, and he is an as working as an assistant professor. Before that, he was uh, working as a, um, uh, he taught three years at Hiroshima University and also North South University as well as uh, Tanganyika University. He has, he, as a MEC scholar, he has obtained his PhD in anthropology from Hiroshima University, as well as a postdoctorate in Hiroshima University as well. His basic ideas um, on focus on research is based on technology, social media, and social movement. And these are the issues that he's going to talk about today. On the other hand, as a discussant, we have Dr. Siyuti Sabur, who is the um, um, associate professor from, um, from Brack University. And she has a degree in master's in anthropology from Dhaka University as well. And she obtained her second MA from Hiroshima University, Japan. So she will be serving as a discussant. And without further ado, we would like to start the program uh, by giving Dr. Moin Zalal the floor, where she would, uh, he would uh, talk about his research and talk about his um, findings. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mastan, for introducing me. And thank you so much, Dr. Shyoti Shubur, for being the discussant. And thank you so much for uh, joining all the participants. Uh, this discussion will be a mix of both English and Bangla so that we can easily communicate. And please note down your questions if you feel like. I, I would have a presentation and I'll, I'll talk uh, more interactively. And thank you so much. Many known faces are there. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. I hope later are in the process. Uh, let me start with the presentation and then we continue talk. All right. So, uh, yes. Uh, we have to keep the timeline in mind. Um, yes. So we will have uh, okay. half an hour of presentation okay. and then we'll open the floor for discussion. Okay. Okay. So I'll Glorious. discuss a bit. And I, I will take the questions first. I will uh, engage with the uh, engage with the audience after you finish. Sure, no worries. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much. So let me start with uh, ice breaking. This is my PhD thesis, so I'm quite happy and proud of it. It take uh, quite a while. So uh, today's discussion is very much close to the research title, thesis title as well. Western sociality and social media movement. Uh, Shahabag movement. So what I meant by Shahabag movement, I'm actually key both the chai. I hope uh, you can understand. I can uh, communicate, right? So what it is, my research is all about. So if you see um, from 2000 onwards, protests erupted in thousands of cities. Hundreds of countries around the world, Arab Spring, Occupy Wall Street, Gezi Park uh, Resistance, Me Too Movement, say uh, Black Lives Matter Movement. So uh, many things are already uh, in play. So they have protested against the authoritarian regime, demanded democracy, equal rights, and so on. These protests have been some of the biggest in history and unprecedented in their uh, respective nature. So nowadays, we often consider social media uh, as a place where you go to for interaction and socialization, not something just out there, outside of our intimate social interaction, friendly conversation. So social media, the idea of social media um, is um, dynamically changing. Another, another game is that back in 2012, I have done my second master's. The title was The Internet as Public Sphere, a Blogging Liberation War versus Jamat Issue in Samarin Blog, a case study in which I kind of predicted the upcoming social media movement in 2013. That is known as Shahabag movement, right? So going back to the next one, my main question was, maybe may seem quite easy, that if you see in the presentation on the left, a protest event, online event created 5th February 2013, and it says protest rally and assembly against the face first like uh, verdict by the tribunal. If an, if an infamous murderer like Kader Mullah, war criminal, get life imprisonment, what is the meaning of this verdict? We do not accept this verdict. Come to Shahabak at 3.30 p.m. And by 4.40 p.m., one of, I'm pretty sure, who was present at that moment 
5th February 2013 is among the audience, in among the audience. So people erupted in the offline space. Why? Why these things are happening? So uh, immediately after the Facebook event, uh, vigorous debate, discussion, engagement was observed among the social media users in Bangladesh. Same day, Boan, blogger and online activist network, organized a protest rally in the street of Shahabak in which around 150 people from diverse background have participated. Why? Later, it developed into a social movement demanding capital punishment of war criminals continued from 5th February to 5th March, roughly, occupying the urban traffic hub of uh, Shahabak. So um, then the question comes, what it is that started from a Facebook post <coughs> translated into an offline protest occupying the Shahabag Square, showing sandals, the police has been uh, guarding the whole space arena. And I was there, like many, I was there. Uh, what was it? Why it is happening? So is it even relevant for you? Is it even relevant for you in 2020 or even in the future? So I have spent, I have invested my um, five years uh, to really coming up with some arguments. And as you can see, this is Shohing Shota Birodhi concert, a very recent one in Raju Hashkorjo, uh, a very uh, close proximity in Dhaka University, University of Dhaka, protesting the communal riot that has been covering um, Bangladesh pretty recently, right? So. Uh, if you can see this picture on the right, on the top, gone, gone viral. People erupted in social media protest. That translated into offline protest. The picture kind of gave us the reminiscence of the mass gathering in Shahabak protest as well. The title says, Bangladesh is for everybody. Uh, the religion could be other. So does this lose its impact or appeal? I hope not. I will strongly suggest two articles, uh, Lost Home, Abandoned Nation, Fighting for a Bangladesh for All, and Social Network of Hate, Content Inciting Violence, Spreading Lies, Cause Irreplaceable Damages, 2021, very recent articles. I want you to uh, have a look. These will give you the pretext. So is social media is mere a communication network? That, was the, that is the first question. And as a social scientist, as an anthropologist, what would be our take on that is the game of, this is the game. Uh, one pretext I should uh, remind you, I should give you is that since 2006, I have been involved with Bangladeshi social media as a blogger, as an online activist, offline activist, researcher, analyst, moderator, uh, social media analyst, and organizer as well. So with this long journey, my ethnographic uh, situated journey made me ask some of the questions that was globally asked, but not giving the ideas. If you just go into a deep dig uh, into the literature, that uh, then you can see that uh, when they are explaining the relationship between technology and society, they are always fall into the trap of two determinism. One is techno deterministic, another is socio-economic structural deterministic standpoint. So it lacked the discussion about social media and the role of online activists, indicated the overemphasis in social socio-political structural conditioning and discourses. Second is lack the critical analysis of anti-liberation war digital discourses that operated in the Shahabag movement, focused on social network in its different connectivity, lacked an analysis of the meaning this uh, connectivity was creating, both online and offline spaces. It also lacks historical analysis concerning digital resistance activism in Bangladesh. Present a static fragmented picture don't never give you the historical context, doesn't give you the localization of social media, localization of internet, the connectivity with politics, the connectivity with uh, localized resistance, right? So that part I want to add and uh, contribute. 
So uh, first and foremost, the biggest uh, questions that I have been hearing since long, and I have been, mm, I think, mm, quite well defending them as well, is that uh, from an ethnographic or anthropological perspective, how you define the ethnographic place in a recent uh, time? Is it a bounded community? You go to a village and then uh, 500 people are there and then you study them? Is it the only case? No. The recent ethnographic research conducted in more modern complex societies focuses on the discontinuities between experienced realities to face-to-face -face social media environment, especially in the space of social movement and digital socialities. To make it very easy, uh, then the research location, the ethnographic setting is in itself the Shahbag movement, the interactivity that is happening during that time within the social media platforms, the connection between the online and offline spaces, uh, the background and the foreground after this event, because you will find uh, tens of thousands of people gather around and uh, having this energy shouting out loud and they disperse. So for a research field, it is a quite difficult uh, thing to handle. Let me show you how I have handled that. Okay. So use of social media can also be interwoven uh, with qualities, political structures, and histories of localities or really uh, regions. In the Shahbag movement or any other social movement related to social media, it can be argued that critical understanding of the relationship between physical setting and virtual setting is crucial because the distinction between virtual and actual space is becoming more complex. I know there would be many in the audience who would claim that, no, 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 this is not real. Virtual is not not real. Then I, I would ask that uh, when there are no notification, you post a beautiful photo, there are no likes, why you feel sad? Why you buy online? Why you chat online? Why? Hmm. Uh, so uh, the relationship between the online and offline space is not that stark opposite that you can argue. It is a matter of imagination and perception as well. So it is crucial then to connect the online and offline spaces. So Shahbag, is Shahbag just, just a place uh, for uh, protest? Uh, it, does this uh, place has any meaning? Yes. If you look closely, Shahabak, uh, very close to National Museum, close to Public Library, Institute of Fine Arts, Chobir Hart. I don't know, um, the younger generations can recall the place called Chobir Hart. I will go back to that. A place for young intellectuals and artists after Shahabak movement, this place was destroyed by the government. But before that, past decade or so, uh, Chobir Hart was one of the crucial places for open space for uh, different discussion, discursive critical engagement, uh, showcasing solidarity, and so many things. So in the physical space, there was a space which was relatively free. So uh, there, are, there is Surardi Uddan, Shahbag Thana, TSC, Shohid Minar, Dhaka University, Buet. That place is itself has its own historical contextual meaning. But before going into that, uh, to connect, uh, just to give you a simple diagram, but that will unmask so many things for you, I guess, is that Shahbag movement, online space and activities is that in the, uh, in the case of offline space and online space, through cognition, communication and cooperation, hmm, uh, use of blog site, Facebook, Twitter, uh, the um, people, they are gathering around creating digital sociality, even before Shahbag movement, right? That translated into offline space. So online and offline, they have been going from the right to left and uh, connecting each other. So what kind of ethnography should we do then? Would it be enough to we would have multi-sided ethnography? No, it has to be multimodal as well, because we are now the way we are talking. Through a medium, right? And uh, past two and a half years or past two years, at least it becomes the norm that we communicate, we socialize through this way. So it is one way multimodal, 
at the same time it is multi sited so um, where are you are look look locating bonani gulshan usa australia anywhere geographically but this uh, platform makes you a virtual mm -hmm. space that uh, brings you together in a centralized space so it is at the same time multi sited at the same time multimodal so uh, my question was what mm -hmm. how i have been doing doing this i was in the street i was observing participating organizing at the same time i was interacting in the social media platforms uh, uh, to bring people in the social movement so i have multiple roles that i have been playing that is why it is crucial to understand that these amount of people gather around in a certain place from a top view and then when you deep dig zoom in you will see activists organizers participants at the same time i was photographing the whole uh, scenario photo doc documentation as well most of the photos actually all of the photos are from my collection so what are the uh, narratives that we should go for it i think i should go for bangla now so aminur rahman said is that kuwait uh, khulna khulna university khulna medical shoh khulna shokol chhatro chhatrira ashun ek hoy to have this appeal let us gather together uh, to protest this uh, verdict at the same time people in a single post and through comments people are showing solidarity uh, giving timeline uh, discussion about this uh, topic showcasing that okay they were there what made that thing really happen right so uh, let me give you the uh, on field from field narration i have not participated in any protest before i do not have any affiliation with any party only bnp or any youth activism i have never participated in, in students politics either i do not have any political connection but i feel proud to be uh, a part of shahabag i love i love this atmosphere i feel i belong here i want justice i want that war criminal to get maximum punishment so what was that spark that bring together seemingly apolitical people coming together in the streets right so uh, what was the historical connection uh, is it out of socio political economic history no i was waiting for the execution of kader molla uh, the long uh, wait is coming to an end i ha i have wanted justice for poet mehran nisa a promising poet brutally killed by kader molla so the memory uh, the uh, the transcending memories through family through the locality uh, receded uh, sustained people's mind so uh, at the, at the same time as you can see those who have initiated they are also diverse group of people there are many types of bloggers in the network of boan they are not a single uh, character they have their own political views but none stronger than the idea of non partisan digital activism in the blogosphere because over the years it was proven that if we want to do something we have to leave our political ideology behind see so the political atmosphere you need to recognize so was it spontaneous what happened during this time i think this narration is very crucial uh, the human chain was much bigger than we have expected when the crowd began to soar we were thinking what to do next uh, what uh, should we finish the program after the human chain Imran was going to other offline activists to get suggestions and understand their views. One of them, a famous one, you will know if I say his name. He suggested to call off the protest and end it there. However, Badhon was determined. We all were so angry that we went for a protest rally. That was one of the biggest in Shahabad. The rally was moving towards Shahabad intersection. Usually, what we do is we return, we turn right and move towards the sculpture of Raju at TSC and come back. this time we decided to just do something completely new no one has ever done before we decided to occupy shahabag intersection and that was it shahabag was ours now never even thought of so on that particular historical moment people became creative all right unpredictable creativity that created uh, that part if you look at the uh, social media interaction only for one social media platform uh, from Uh, from uh, 12 am to 1 am kader molla ict trial shib related post are like like that hmm. Hmm. but number of posts were very low hmm. but if we go just further 
12 p.m. to 1 p.m., uh, the number of posts are increasing. What kind of posts were there? Verdict of Kader Mullah, rage against Amilig and ICT, disappointment, rage, call for action, solidarity, rage against ICT, disappointment, rage, Shahbag updates, live blogging, disappointment. As you can see, the intensity grew how the offline event was played. So the connection was uh, really played out even from the beginning, right? So it was never disconnected. But is it coming from nowhere? No. If you see the uh, timeline, Chabak movement was one of the eight. But protest against uh, against attack on secular blog 2013, online and offline protest in Shahabag, protest against attack on blogger Tanvir Ahmed Art Jail, protest against bringing the dead body of war criminal to Bangladesh, protest against the Ramu violence. Since 2008, it has been going on from online to offline. Maybe not for a wider crowd, but definitely uh, for that community. So blogger and online activist uh, that we know, before that there is another one, blogger and online activist for national interest. Okay, One of the key points that will show how a potential political entity creates, how the political entity emerges, how look at the quality, look at the description. No particular membership is required, no organizational structure, not even a constitution. If you go to form any political resistance or party, these will be required. Those who are involved in any form of activism in national interest and active online, this is the platform for them. We are not left or right. We are the representative of the people, those who are above partisan political beliefs. So the urban online youth were fed up of partisan political belief. They thought of creating a space based on the online activism where they can surpass the uh, potential uh, problems of partisan political beliefs. So there is no precedent, there is no vice president, no hierarchy. Anybody can get in, anybody can uh, go out. But whatever, uh, one, one simple thing, uh, one rule they maintained, that was uh, we do not allow any GIB and anti-liberation war forces. That was the, their one otherness that was uh, quite, quite eminent. Okay. So uh, how technology is related? Because of the new liberal market, technology and digital culture, the internet came into Bangladesh. Do you know internet was quite expensive? In 1996, there was a chance of getting into the submarine cable, connecting the optical fiber. Bangladesh didn't took it. So that delayed it. At the same time, uh, 96, 97 onwards, you should remember the boom in telecommunication industry, the Grameen phone, Telenor. That was one of the uh, impact that created. Hmm. And uh, at the same time, introduction to writing in Bangla. Hmm, writing in Bangla was one of the key feature. The birth of online community by blog site somehow in blog. Introduction to key features, writing in Beng Bengali, common front page. Uh, so the technology is in itself make you social. To add you that, the, uh, the invention of Facebook or any other social media was not a fluke. Uh, in back in 2005, when the, in Silicon Valley, North America, when the um, bubble burst, then they were searching for another innovation which can bring people to get interested in internet-based communication. That is why they gave the, developed the power that, okay, from now on, you are not merely a, a user. You are the prosumer as well. You can take photos, you can publish, you can broadcast, you can do so many things. Each and every one of you is a broadcaster right now, right? Why YouTube? Why Facebook? Why followers? Why e-commerce? You need to think that there is a new liberal impetus, both innovation and economy in both cases. The localized version also gave when in publishing in published popular broadcast media, television, a newspaper, they need a, a moderation system that needs to go through. If you want to meet a writer, talk about their write-up, you need to go through, write them, search them, find them. Now you just need to inbox them. Oh, I like your writing. That part was very good. Instant feedback system. That was not possible even uh, 10 to 12 years back. Always remember that. So from online to offline, from 
private to public space, how it translated even before many much uh, many more years before Shahbag, blog adda, bloggers meet, blog day, blogger rally in Chobir Heart. In many cases, the online and offline spaces were connecting, making a name in the digital social sociality. Now you are searching for opinion leaders. Now you are going for motivation speakers. You are going for you know many of uh, in recent history who really made their name economically, socially, and influence uh, that you know as social media influencer, they were, uh, even before uh, Facebook in Bangladesh, through blog, they were, the social media influencer were created. Now it is much more commercialized, but that time they were also searching for authenticity, authority, not every pile that we can call um, those people who really can trust uh, the, the opinion of others, the opinion leaders. So that is why uh, this um, offline talk, offline gathering, and the depiction of online really create this connection. So why are technolo technology is related? The first, remember 2006, who was in power? Okay, remember in 2006, uh, when comes in February, month of February, when the uh, emotion uh, of the nation was very much sophisticated towards Ekushi February, 21st February, language movement. Then one uh, blogger uh, coming from um, JIB claiming that uh, freedom fighters of Bangladesh were um, the criminals or so forth. So then the first digital activism started in protest of this uh, post and that uh, doesn't really stay there over the time it, it segregated into different block sites those are prominent about their uh, ideological space so uh, you can see pro and anti-liberation war mix these uh, block sites can be identified but is it uh, uh, only resided there no if you see the global trend uh, from 2010 to 2013 Shahbag, Bangladesh war criminal, Razakar, Jamat Islam, these are picked in 2013, right? That doesn't stay in Bangladesh. Dabite uh, Chicago, the whole uh, demand goes to Chicago. It is on the left, it is uh, the protest rally in Silet. On the right, Gonotagaran Jukto Rajo Moncho, UK. So people in UK gather around. So what made this thing possible? Right now we are in a locally global condition. So technology played a significant part. So this one page, one site become the epicenter of digital resistance. So the spatio-temporally of the occupied space of Shahabak resulted in several changes. The mass gathering of Shahabak movement ended in 5th March, by then Shahbag movement had passed one month in sit-in protest. Shahbag activists who occupied the area for one month uh, cleared the area. But is Shahbag ended? Is there in only one Shahbag? The question is for you. Okay. But uh, how, uh, how these places has been uh, destroyed or removed physically? Chobirhat in 2013, Chobirhat is 2014. No more Chobirhat. Right. Why not? Why there is no Chobir Hat? The question remains. In the Shahbag movement, there was no television screen in the center of this place. Why 2017 there is a big sculpture, a physical change in that particular place? Why? Question for the audience. Think. So uh, that's why I have developed the theoretical framework of resistance sociality. And this will explain that how the political public sphere actually created from offline state is there connected with economy uh, contested fluid public sphere of socio-cultural socio-political socio-economic and these spaces connected to each other uh, with online spaces all right so that's this space is fluid sometimes uh, we are connecting we gathered like the like this you are interested about this issue I have uh, kind of uh, pushed you to come here, then you are gathered here. But after this meeting, you will also disperse, right? But that doesn't mean the sociality goes away, it stays. So uh, this diagram, keep in mind, I'll come back to you again. 
I will not go for uh, the detail, but I'll give just one simple. Resistance is something as action and non-action of people. We may recognize it instantly whenever we see it. And when there is a resistance, there is power. When there is power, there is resistance. And how social media is playing in the part? Digital resistance, which translated into social movement, is transcending spaces, generated sociality, online and offline. The dynamic relationship between technology and society in such an event requires a theoretical framework which may explain the complex contextual dynamics which is operating in online and offline spaces. Concerning uh, the social media movement, uh, Paparazzi argued that social media is helping gathering active publics where social media tool allowed crowd to condense into publics. I know you are going to ask that uh, not all the time they, can, they also can create passive publics. I'll be coming to that. So if we uh, um, sketch the map of Gono Jagaran Mancho, the central stage, and if you see the formation of that, it is it never claimed to be an organization. It is not a registered political party. It is a platform, a physical one, and, it, and an ideological one as well, right? It has its space, boundaries, quasi space, and uh, there are uh, Shahbag uh, supporters, even cover civil society, leftist, rightist, uh, pro Shahbag people are gathering around. On the other hand, another uh, quasi space is open, war criminal, uh, supporters of uh, um, war criminals, and so on. But that space actually connected through the online spaces and also interacting online uh, spaces as such. That is why, is it only for, is resistance sociality only for Shahabag? No, resistance sociality for Bashar Killa, for Hefazat Islam, there is no bipolar antithesis of each other, though seemingly it seems that they are bipolar to each other. Okay. But what are the things with a non-partisan face at the Grand Rally of 8th February 2013? Gono Jagaran spokesperson Imran Sharka led the participant an oath-taking ceremony where they sought to continue their protest until their demands are met, met and boycott Jamaat and their businesses by all means. What are the counter one? What are the counter one? Uh, offline space in 15th February, Shahabag. Uh, on its high and second grand rally following the 8th February was scheduled. Ahmed Rajiv Haidar, a young architect, blogger, and Shahaba activist, was brutally stabbed, slaughtered to death, death by Islamist extremist groups, which he was when while he was returning from Shahaba. Bashar Killa, another online resistance space, claimed narrative uh, that, that Rajiv Haidar was a core Shahaba activist. He was an atheist, he was blaspheming. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that is why we should resist them. And then the support of the Shahbag movement divided. All right. So that is the argument of Bashar Killa, and that is the propaganda by Bashar Killa as well, or uh, showcasing or highlighting a particular aspect of the whole Shahbag. That is the propaganda which is claiming Bashar Killa supporters having free sex and doing immoral activities in the night. Uh, and the counter one is coming up showing how two photos have been doctored to create a negative immoral impression of the Shahbag activist. Aren't these things happening right now in Bangladesh? I guess so. So resistance sociality is for Shahbag? No. The picture was, uh, doctored picture was uh, showcased that this guy, um, Saidi, moon face was shown in the uh, moon and many people from different places in Bangladesh believe that and they, shook, they took it as an omen that is going against religion. So digital resistance sociality and social media platforms emerged as a crucial digital protest entity. Is it over? No, every day we are engaging with that. And blogger and online activists were deleting their posts. What is the backlash? Uh, reducing their activities in the digital locality, hiding their identities, very careful about their daily movements and activities. Uh, one narrative, I have greatly reduced interaction in social media, avoided discussing controversial issues as much as I can. Uh, I was in total silence for long, then the situation started to change, but the risk is still out there. I have never, I've never wanted to leave the country. Maybe this time I have to leave. 
all right arrested and detained secular blogger again uh, how to contain this resistance sociality right uh, one thing is that change in places change in geographical location very important part another one suppressive law even more exemplary suppressive uh, application technological surveillance peer surveillance self censorship infrastructural shutdown celebration of partisanship lack of digital literacy and make digital space dangerous vulnerable the culture of abuse funded organized propaganda digital sociality encouraged bipolarity hyper uh, commercialization hyper uh, dumbing down population social media manipulation false sense of freedom more and more dependency on so uh, sociality without the proper training the deliberate uh, misinformation overload misinformation disinformation the unpreparedness both online and offline resistance dynamic and contextual understanding between technology and society and politics by the regime so resistance sociality died out no uh, is it only the um, thing of shahabag no uh, is it transferable yes are people using it in a creative manner yes uh, are people uh, still using it uh, as much as possible not all the time but sometimes uh, is shahabag and their meaning generation stopped no thank you so much for your patience and listening to this long boring uh, presentation thank you thank you so much dr moin uh, it was a very interesting talk uh, especially the connection of sociality with social media uh, i would like to invite dr seyuti sabur uh, associate professor of brack university anthropology to discuss the paper at hand thank you so much um Thank you, Masnoon, uh, for giving me the space, and thank you, Moin, for uh, for a very interesting uh, description of how the movement was organized. Because this is something that, um, because as you mentioned, we were on the on on the ground and off the ground, and as an anthropologist, we have a, um, I think we have a much larger project and which emanates a certain kind of descri description. Um, the the digital sociality part is, is quite interesting. I, I find it very interesting, uh, especially the um, triad you mentioned. Uh, can you go to your second uh, or third yeah, uh, third slide? Where sure, you sure. Yeah. Give sure, the sure. triad. Sure, sure. There was a, there was a digital sociality, how it is condemned on, uh, sorry, conducted uh, on the field. I think there was a diagram. Yeah, 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 please. Yeah. Um, so what I find interesting is 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 the description and the methodologically how you um, how you try to yes. Yes. So the cognition, communication, and cooperation. Um, the, this 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 is something that I really liked about uh, connecting the online and offline space. Um, there are a few questions that I have, uh, which is actually. Uh, is, is relating or kind of reflecting because I've, I've written extensive pieces, right? Uh, one of the piece was um, uh, the on, the everyday account for 40 Echo. days. Uh, yes, the first one was a postcard from Shahbag. So we were we we were looking into things through visuals and what was happening on the ground. And later there were two um, two major work that came out. One was uh, uh, Shahbag to Sedpur, and it was. Uh, looking into the longer history, history in a longer lens. And the other one, the recent publication that I have is, is the limits of radical politics in unstable field, rethinking Shahbag, Hefazat and women's grand rally. Now, there are a few things that I think uh, uh, would have been even more interesting. I know it's a, sh it's a short snippet of a big thesis, uh, but I think uh, what I find uh, would have been interesting for me to look into it uh, from a movement lens as well. Um, the lens uh, that, that I have been talking about, um, about how it was, it was not a ideological, as you've mentioned, it's not an ideologically led a movement. It was a platform and a problem with the platform. You don't talk about problem with the platform that much because the platform, when it is open, it is also have the chances or the potential 
to, to be acquiesced by the state or the other interested party, which has happened within the within first, first two weeks, right? So these are the things I think um, I would be interested to know is that how that how that that happened because we are also talking about a populist movement if you look into uh, latin american cases if you look into european cases um ideological ideology led movements and transversal politics are going hand in hand and transversal yeah. politics one of the nature of the transversal politics is is populist movement oh, and yeah. populist movements are are it's not only shahbag it, it, oh. it is it has a local history uh, yeah it has a local localized history that it is coming out of a particular issue but what i have been talking about and what i've been trying to reassert is oh. that in um after the neoliberal turn um, since 90s, mm. uh, there are there are shift in the political field, yes. which doesn't allow you to have um, uh, for many very reasons. I I don't want to go into it, but um, the economic development and mm. annihilation of uh, of uh, alternative, especially left movement and other political parties, uh, this actually led this this space where. Uh, populist movement would be stronger and when the populist movement is stronger and you don't have a organized force behind it it's always easy uh for to state or any other party, party to intervene to and and claim it right? Right. right yeah yeah so so that is that is something that i think we need to talk more because mm -hmm. uh populist movement is the characteristics of mm -hmm. how state is organizing mm -hmm. and manifesting and and if we uh, don't look Shabak just as a movement, but a, as no. a larger political field. Yeah, then no. it makes more sense uh, to yeah, see the, the transformation of state, transformation of parties, transformations of movement as well. And yeah. populist movement is one of the uh, how you call it representative of such uh, transformation. Highlight. Yeah, highlight. Yeah, transformation yeah. within the field. Oh, within so, the field. Yeah, within the field. So that is that is something that I think uh, we need to think even more um, because I think historically it is uh, we, that that is our responsibility as as uh, scholars from the south, um, and also to distinguish that it is not like any other movement. Yeah, oh also, yeah but also uh, distinguish uh, like also have that scholarship uh, to talk about what is this then, oh, right? Yeah. So when you started off very nicely with the cogn cognition, communication, and cooperation, but what I find missing in the puzzle is that that the longer lens, uh, longer okay. lens, which talks about uh, which talks about these changes in the field, right? Actually, I have it, but I didn't. <laughs> well, so, it's still uh, quite uh, long, forty-five yeah. slides. All right, but but uh, it's very good to know that we are uh, same <laughs> line of thinking. Yes. Yes. So I started. Yeah, yeah. I started with uh, 17, 1970 from the uh, historical yeah. part. But yeah, got it. Yeah. So it's it's not only just just mm -hmm. history. It's it's a history, history, but also concept. Yeah, history of yeah. Yes. Um, there's there's something mm -hmm. else that I wanted to talk mm -hmm. about. One is we talked about we talked about. Uh, and it, it's only natural that as a part of the movement, you had a very different kind of zeal. But as an academic, activist and academic, which, which I, I claim to be, it's also important to see the um, inner inner fights and inner battles, mm -hmm. right? Fights of ideology, right? That's, that's why a Shabak movement, it started off uh, Hindu, Muslim, Christian, Amra, Shabai, Bangali, and then, then it had to change and say that Amra Shabai Pahari Bangali, and, uh, yeah. yeah. So all of this, so this, this, this internal changes and shifts also represents a very different kind of politics. The possibility. So I, I see Shahabad not as as just a mere movement, mm -hmm. but it it was a accumulation of of many strings. Many but at the same uh, same time, what it offered was a possibility, a new kind of politics, which the boat we have missed. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so uh, I think that 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 is something that I I have been talking about is that that it's it's a different. It could have been a very different kind of politics. Very different family, yeah. But uh, because a lack of organization and 
the open nature of the platform actually uh, let it go astray. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that is, that is not uh, unnatural and that is not un uncommon. Mm -hmm. Even if you look at Arab Spring, it, it has been after a point, it was very successful movement. It was very mm -hmm. open and very, and then you see like the brotherhood comes into power like, and, and riding the tide and coming into yeah. power. Uh, whether it's good or bad, that's a different question. But the thing is like, every political formation creates beneficiaries mm -hmm. and every beneficiary has their political agenda. And uh, when we look into Shahabag, I think it's important that we um, identify those, those spaces as well. So I won't take much longer because I think I, 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 think I have a lot to say because I have been working <laughs> on this and I've been writing on this and, and um, I think even till last year. And I, I, then I, I, I said like mm. enough is enough, it has to stop now and I have to move on mm. to something else. Oh. But these are, these are the something that like the gender question, the ethnicity mm. question, the class question, uh, the linguistic questions, these are, these are very, very um, interesting um, dynamical within the political field mm -hmm. and it, it's very important to remember that political field is not only political party or civil society mm -hmm. but uh, the the uh, the mass that you are talking about talking. The, the people that that coming from different background uh, the, uh, the the this this transnational solidarity mm -hmm. uh, and this this expands the political field. It mm. expands what what could be possible at that moment. So I think these are the few things that that I I would love to see if you have a paper uh, and then consolidated more. But as a as a as a descriptive work, as a uh, thick description of methodology, this is really really interesting because it also gives gives us the um, scope to see. Um, what you guys have been going through and how how you organize the initial phases. Mm -hmm. So for me, that that, that is significant. Okay. So I'll, I'll just stop it here. And I would invite, uh, because since I'm a moderator, uh, so I would invite, um, uh, open the floor for everyone else um, so that they can join the discussion. Um, is it okay that they, are, they can question in Bengali as well? Yeah, it is. It is fine. Uh, the only problem is we do have we had few foreign students. That's why I was uh, I was I was being very cautious because uh, it's supposed to be um, for everyone. And I understand that uh, we might not be comfortable in the language. So uh, whatever language that you want to ask your question, it's perfectly all right. Uh, the answers would be both in English and in Bangla. So Moin, just keep that in mind. Yeah, Thank sure. you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Cesar Sabor. Uh, I would like to ask the audience if they have a question to kindly raise their hand. Um, and then uh, we would like to open the floor so that you would ask your questions to Dr. Moin Talal. Thank you. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah. Cool, cool. Uh, no, thank you I, uh, for inviting. And um, I was also, although from uh, remotely above, um, from abroad, I was able to kind of participate and, uh, you know, observe the whole situation. Um, I'm, I'm one of those bloggers who you may have heard in the first few mm. months, uh, one of the four, you know, got blamed, quote unquote, for atheism, etc. Um, one thing I just wanted to understand, you may have uh, explored and, and described is, is the um, involvement of government bodies such as DGFI or somebody orchestrating uh, online campaigns, which are generally not orchestrated by kind of group of people. Uh, have you touched upon that at all? Uh, um, I have touched uh, one part is that, uh, first of all, the authentic data are quite difficult because yeah. who's gonna <laughs> substantiate yeah. that, but from 
in-depth interviews and ethnographic participation, uh, there are so many uh, stakeholders was at play. Cool. So yes, there was one section, uh, even before Shabak movement, you're right. Uh, one observation is right. At the same time, uh, what Shiuti Shabur mentioned is that um, the, when the possibility of multivocal, uh, multi-ethnic, multi-gender politics, politics is emerging, then there are also creative process also emerged uh, from a very partisan uh, focused uh, political regime as well. And they, their wings have been playing that role to kind of contain uh, that uh, and give a monovocal voice rather than a multivocality. Arif, okay. Yeah, yeah. No, thank you. I, I just wanted to highlight yeah. that. The... Uh, yeah, and, and, and also our uh, touching up with them is that uh, the inside story, the internal power struggle, and those idea of uh, from the center point, then uh, uh, internal peripheries, hmm, the other pockets, hmm, many other pockets, how they have been neglected outside it, initiated, I, I try to accommodate as much yeah, as it's I, just the connection between yeah. killing of uh, uh, Ahmed Rajiv Haider mm -hmm. and then initial and, and then immediate uh, kind of premeditated attack on on the uh, on what they are and you know all in all the media outlets that you see it almost like it could not have been organically happening it must have been orchestrated centrally somehow that's that's my hint basically okay i got it one of the key feature was from that uh, visually present idea was amar desh right as another mainstream media as such hmm. and on the other hand visually uh, that you can see the present was bashar kella these two avenues but uh, the uh, multi polymedia environment how they played it, it is a very educated guess. Thank you, Arif. Thank you, Arif, sir. Um, is there anyone else that would like to ask a question? The floor is still open. Uh, please, uh, I would like the audience to raise their hand if they have any questions for uh, Dr. Moeen. Uh, one person I like to introduce uh, in the who is I think present in this floor. One is Arif Rahman. I'm blessed to have both of those them here. Another one is Koshik Ahmed, because not only informant but at the same time many other things. So Faisal Karim, do you have any question or any comment on? Uh, uh, social media thank, you, thank you, Shorod. This is uh, actually a great, great research because I knew from the beginning that uh, you uh, you were collecting things uh, long before you started your PhD uh, with the hope that you will do this and you did it. So thank you very much. And the findings um, somehow, I mean, we didn't dig inside that much but you did it we participated we saw from the um from the outer space all things but inside there are a lot of social changes and uh, there are so i mean I, I know your in your term there are a lot of things happening so that was a new thing to learn thank you very much Sharad, for thank you working this Thank you, Faisal, sir, uh, for, for a very um, interesting and um, appropriate question for the topic. Is there any other any comments or any queries that we would like to add to Dr. Moin's uh, research? Uh, since we have some time, uh, yeah. uh, we would In like to have... For methodology, because this is one of the case, uh, especially who wanted to study social media or anthropological study of social media, they would often ask especially from the students that was one of the gays that is there any any question from of that
okay i can see uh, students from media studies as well yeah. is there any question from media studies side as well jannati or any other i can recall no sir amar taraf theke kono question nei <laughs> okay all I, right yes i think um I think most uh, uh, most questions have been already um, uh, discussed. Um, would you like to add some closing remarks to, uh, as a conclusion, perhaps? Okay, uh, all right. To this uh, 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 before before uh, uh, Moin closes, uh, can, can we hear from Farzanapur Shahidur? Who yes, yes, Yeah, just a minute uh, from uh, Farzanapur and Shahidur. If they have anything to add. um i it was really interesting to listen this thank you moin and shivdi very interesting discussion um as a norm i should you know i should suppose to take you out for coffee both of you <laughs> so shita pavna thank you thank you thank you for example thank you shaidur do you want to add anything shaidur no shaidur thanks okay, okay. okay okay um now we, uh, we can um yeah i think we are ready to close moin okay all right then i have some concluding remarks is that one of the key understanding is that when we are too much focused on uh, any media as such we forget that we are living in that space so it is uh, for social scientists and those who want to study mm -hmm, uh Uh, they could uh, really focus on that reconceptualize social media not only as a media but also highly connected another space of the socio political economical realm that is one comment i should uh, add another one is that uh, anything that we are facing in our livelihood daily life everyday practices understanding of social movements mm, historically and um in a particular um, geographical location i think the future uh, is somehow uh, pushing us to live in a hyper reality that even from a country from the south we cannot uh, ignore anymore that would be my conclusion thank you so much thank you dr moin sir uh I would like to close this session by saying thank you uh, Dr. Farzana Munshi for uh, arranging the seminar series for us so that we may discuss many social issues uh, both from economics and anthropology so a big thanks to you uh, uh, Farzana Munshi Mits and I would also like to thank um, uh, Dr. Moin Zalal and Dr. Said Sabu for also participating and being here with us this evening uh, this late and also the audience that has joined us especially the students uh, other academics and other colleagues from the economics and social sciences department and other um, uh, various departments as well so thank you all for coming uh, in the future we will have more sessions such as these so please stay tuned and um, thank you everyone and i would like to say that it has been very interesting and definitely we may learn a lot from these uh, seasoned scholars in the future as well thank you masnur uh, for for helping us to organize and 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 um, and run the show thank you thank, thank you. you so much masnur thank you so much thank you. bye thank you everyone take bye -bye. care everyone have a good evening bye